Today I'm going to give you a quick hardware tour of a Silicon Graphics Iris Indigo R4400 machine running at 150 megahertz with an ELAN graphics option. I'm going to start the hardware tour off by going over the front panel of the machine with you. On the top side of the front panel you've got two tabs which when depressed allow you to remove the front cover. I'm going to cover this at a later stage in the video. On the top left hand side you've got the Silicon Graphics logo. On the top right hand side you've got a set of perforations which allow the sound from the system speaker to come through. Towards the bottom side you've got two vents which allow airflow into the machine. And on the left hand side you've got the system power LED. On the right hand side of the front panel you have a flap which when opened reveals the system reset button, the slot for the optional locking bar, I personally have never seen a locking bar fitted to one of these machines and then two optional drive bays. In the top optional drive bay I have a optional tape drive fitted and the bottom drive bay is blanked off. Taking a look at the rear panel of the machine starting from the top left is the system power supply unit, the system power switch, the input power connector which is a standard kettle plug connector and the connector or the optional connector for the monitor, the locking bar slot, an external SCSI port which would usually have a terminator fitted to it, however I intend using this machine with an external CD-ROM permanently connected so I won't be needing one of those, a parallel port, an ethernet port and this brings us to the port for the keyboard and mouse. It may look like a standard PS2 port but it's not. The Voltages at which it operates are completely different and if you happen to plug a PS2 device into this port you'll more than likely damage the device and the motherboard of the machine. There are two mini DIN serial ports, the various inputs and outputs for the onboard sound device. Moving over to the graphics unit of the machine there's a 13W3 graphics port, a Genlock connector as well as a port for the optional 3D glasses. This brings us to the point where I remove the front cover of the machine to reveal what lies within. I do so by depressing the tabs at the top of the front cover, lifting it forward and removing it. Okay, starting on the top right hand side you have the system power supply to which is attached the system speaker and reset button. This slot is for the system locking bar and below the power supply unit you have three drive bays which facilitates 3.5 inch drives. The top drive bay is populated by the tape drive, the middle drive bay is empty and the bottom drive bay is populated with the system disk. Moving over to the left hand side there's a cover which covers the system board as well as the graphics subsystem. In order to expose these modules I turn this little knob, lower the front panel forward and this exposes the boards within. On the left hand side you've got the CPU or system board and on the right hand side you've got the graphics and in this case it's an ELAN graphics subsystem. Taking a look at the system board for the machine I'm going to start on the left hand side with the CPU module It has a rather large heatsink fitted to it and that is for the R4400 chip. The RAM banks are populated with 64 megs of RAM and below the CPU module, which is rather hard to see, is the system battery and this has been fitted with a longer life battery. Okay, the optional slots for the machine are two GIO slots and in the case of this machine they are fitted with blanks as they are empty. Moving around to the back side of the system module, you have the connector which connects the module onto the back plane of the machine. This brings us to the ELAN graphics subsystem and as you can see it's a rather impressive looking graphics subsystem if you consider that it was created in 1991. Okay, I'll start off with the video RAM. It's got three video RAM modules and it has a Z buffer installed. This particular graphics module has four GE7 geometry engines and one RE3 raster engine and it has twice the graphics performance of the XZ system available for the Iris Indigo. Looking at the back of the unit again, you can see the connector which links it to the mid plane of the machine. 
I unfortunately don't have the required proprietary keyboard and mouse to run the system, as well as an external SCSI CD-ROM required to install IREX on the drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and boot the system as far as I can to prove that it does work. And here we go. Okay, and there the problem comes up. Okay, because there isn't a valid install of IREX on the drive, the system can't boot, and because I don't have the required keyboard and mouse, I can't get into the PROM menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut down the machine. 